the business today back in today's Congress here in Bengaluru and I'm joined by Dr. Manish Gupta, Director for Google Research India. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking that earlier this year, Google had announced a lot of initiatives with respect to AI. Uh, a lot of interesting ones from, from what I can remember, there was one where doctor's transcription could be read through AI, there were multiple language models. What's the progress on that and how soon can we see that? Oh yeah, so we are very excited about that. So for instance, I think one of the things you maybe saw was this project called Vani, yeah. where we are working with the Indian Institute of Science to collect speech samples from pretty much 773 districts overall. The plan is eventually to expand to 773 districts of India and really uh, get the full diversity of dialects, accents to allow us to then build models that can truly understand all of these different languages, all of these different dialects, all of these accents. Uh, and we have been building, again, so we are making good progress. Already kind of data has been collected from over 80 districts and and uh, we have started to kind of make use of that data. Uh, likewise, we are building multilingual models where a single AI model can understand over 100 Indian languages. Our criteria was initially after like working and releasing a model that previously worked on 16 Indian languages, we initially thought of, okay, should we cover all 22 scheduled languages? But then we said, no, let's be more ambitious. If there's, there are so many variations of languages, so we said that if there is a language that's spoken by over 1 lakh people in India, we want that language to be understood by our models. So again, very excited about the progress. So, ever since we saw uh, Chad GPT come into the picture, there was sort of a generative AI race among the companies and Google did participate in that too, BART. Uh, however, there's been uh, user feedback that BART isn't as enjoyable or as uh, worth the time as a Chad GPT is or even a Bing is. Uh, how is BART sort of going to be the game changer in this, in, in this particular race and how will it emerge as a front leader according to the company? So, uh, first of all, I think it's very healthy to have this competition. Um, and again, Google actually invented a lot of the underlying technologies um, like the transformer architecture uh, on which all of these large language models are based. That was invented in 2017 and came out with the precursor, uh, the uh, language model called BERT, uh, which again showed for the first time, right, that pathway to building a single model which would have so many of these language capabilities. So, so Google has been, again, uh, fairly deliberate that because there is also that potential for these language models, right, to cause harm, perpetuate biases, uh, Google has been kind of a lot more deliberate, right, about releasing these models publicly. And what we are now following is this kind of a combination of being bold and responsible at the same time. So how do we, again, start making some of these models available to the uh, com large community of users and then but develop them in a manner, right, that supports uh, responsibility where kind of you avoid perpetuating biases against, again, uh, like specific communities uh, where you avoid problems like creating misinformation because it's very easy, right, for these models as it's known to hallucinate and just make up facts, which can, again, put in the hands of people who are not exercising discretion, can really uh, make this problem of misinformation, which is already upon us, right, much worse. Speaking of that, we saw world leaders come out and write an open data saying that we need to stop the development uh, till the till the fear of unknown is sort of met, till we know the potential of it, only then should we develop. Uh, what is Google's take on that? Uh, with GPT-4, and uh, we saw what GPT-4 could do, and that sort of shook everybody, that if the potential of AI is so extreme, it could be a wild, wild west everywhere. So yeah, so Google has uh, been, in fact, strongly advocating that, yes, these are extremely powerful technologies. In, in at least my view, just stopping the development of technology is not the right answer. But I think there needs to be this very robust uh, discussion with the various stakeholders in the society, the policymakers, uh, uh, people from the legal, uh, 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 like lawyers, uh, ethicists, social scientists, 
So there needs to be that very robust discussion on what's the right way, right? That we develop these technologies in a manner that minimizes the risk because see the potential for AI to really contribute to the well-being of billions of people. It's immense. So it will be a shame, right? If we do not kind of you uh, try and achieve that potential uh, just because of the potential risk. So, so Google is actually, in fact, very strongly championing that, yes, uh, not only does there need to be that robust discussion, that, yes, there is a need uh, for governments to re regulate AI so that we really uh, bring out the best uh, of what AI has to offer and we start really mitigating the risks that are posed by AI. Uh, recently, uh, we did one of Business Today's uh, special issues was on artificial intelligence, the cover story, uh, where the pertinent question was, is AI friend or a foe in its current phase? Right now, the development that we've seen, the fears that have uh, sort of risen out of it, would you say is it a friend or a foe? Uh, today, it's already a friend. I mean, uh, you see so much of the AI technology today being used. I mean, when you do, let's say, often... Uh, when you are faced with a problem, right, the first thing somebody does is a Google search, right, and and all of that is powered by AI. When you're going from point A to point B, right, I mean, today, things like Google Maps gives you such accurate information about where you're likely to uh, encounter congestion. It's all powered by AI. There's work that we are doing. I mean, we have deployed AI technologies, for instance, working with nonprofits in the public health space, where with this organization, Arman, which is has been improving the health of expecting mothers and their babies. And they found that, again, by default, despite that their program in which they sell helpful messages to women while they are expecting, despite all of the wonderful work that they do, so many expecting mothers, they end up dropping out of their program. We have actually deployed in production AI-based models with them that help them identify, okay, which are those mothers who are at a high risk of dropping out and the very few human representatives that uh, Arman has, who are the most important women that they should reach out to, to keep them engaged. And we have shown through, again, rigorous studies that these AI models actually make a difference. Sure. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you today. Thank you. Thank you.